Welcome to probably the most unreasonable video I, I have ever made. This is by far, by an order of magnitude, the largest real-time strategy game I have ever seen. Not 4v4, not 8v8, but 25 versus 25. 50 fully operational beyond all reason commanders will enter. But only one team of 25, or however many are left, will be victorious. You're going to notice a lot of similarities to Supreme Commander, as both the games are based off the original, or the spiritual successor and inspiration. Total annihilation. Commanders are able to build armies on the land, on sea, and in the air. Uh, of course, there are a few extra steps in the process, and I have no idea what that looks like with this many players. But they will battle across one of the most varied maps. I'm surprised there is a map of the scale to fit 50 commanders capable of building hundreds of units each. And just a forewarning, I've turned the graphics down to about as close to potato as we could get in 2023. But Beyond All Reason is celebrating 25,000 members on its Discord. Quite a community that you should probably join, as the game is free to play, as well as created by volunteers. In fact, it's very difficult to even pay for anything surrounding the game. I think they have some merch, maybe? Um, but you can only find it by following the link below in the description, which you can get to after... Jimmy, what are we at? A reasonable number. 1,204 likes on this video, on this cast, on this incredibly unique experience. And I'll cast another one. Or direct you to the second channel where we have a lot more Beyond All Reason basic guides and stuff like that. I'll go over the basics. We'll try to keep it on a relatively small scale. But there are, are two and a half main resources here uh, in Beyond All Reason. Metal, you see in the top left, gathered by metal extractors, uh, mainly throughout the map, or by reclaiming wreckage from both, uh, well, from destroyed units. Energy, gathered by wind turbines, by uh, solar panels, and potentially later on by fusion reactors. Uh, which are your more late game option. And then the third resource, which isn't exactly, well, there's also the ability to uh, gather energy from the water as well with hydroelectric. But the third resource is build power. The ability to use those resources and create units from production facilities like shipyards, like uh, bot labs, like vehicle plants, which eventually level up to tier two versions, and then tier three with the experimental gantry has your your more heavily advanced expensive units. Build power is the ability to bring those resources to bear, usually done via construction turrets or construction bots, uh, or the commander itself, which is a capable fighter, but if you lose it, uh, it's very likely it's going to be revived, except in very specific scenarios. Can be repaired and has a disintegration gun. Also, in case uh, you didn't notice Starcraft Man under here, can walk underwater. How convenient. Um, I'm not sure if it can use its D-gun there. So, instead of like Starcraft, building 5, 10, 20 factories, you find yourself building one, maybe two, and sinking a lot of build power into it to churn out units very, very quickly. You can share units with allies, share resources. You can see how many resources your allies are getting. Teamwork is paramount and beyond all reason. I think that's taken to the next level here. With 25 versus 25, it looks like we have some commanders self-destructing in order to claim those resources. All you need is one commander alive at the end. That's all that matters. Yeah, some of these reclaimer bots. Grave robbers. There are two factions, though uh, it's more like the, the closest you'll get is two uh, Terran factions, as they have similar units, and all players can potentially make both factions of the Cortex and the Armada. Very generally, Cortex units are uh, a bit stronger but slower, whereas Armada units are a bit more maneuverable uh, and can potentially hit harder but are more fragile. But that is by no means a, a rule, but instead a guideline. Oh. 
I I'm just surprised we managed to find enough colors to make any of this make sense. But so far, 24 to 20 commanders. Once we get down to it, we'll be a little bit more uh, stingy about keeping track of who's who. And almost all units, uh, all attacks are projectiles as well. So attacking up and down hills makes it much easier for your units to find uh, their targets. Also, friendly fire is on, much to the dismay, potentially, of your teammates, depending on how you're doing. But fighting up hills is always going to be a difficult process, strategically and emotionally. But so far, the real battle, I think we got to keep track of Ragna, who is, by a pretty large margin, the highest level player, ranked 64, with nobody else ranked over 45. Anything over 50 is like your top grandmasters very generally if if uh i'm close to correct here um 30s and 40s are like your diamond and masters and uh 10 through 20s are more towards your metal leagues um and then below 10 takes a decent amount of effort uh, i don't think we have any players there <laughs> in this game still a whole lot of battle happening in the south nems versus darko and elmer fudd the commander's holding the line. A risky business. Only a single construction bot repairing here. Still holding for now as the, uh, the maces, the plasma bots, unable to make too much progress. We do have, in the ocean, some more battles happening. It does afford you a lot of extra resources if you're able to control the seas. And it looks like here, while you can walk across the shallows, uh, if you control the seas, you control access to, like, two-thirds of the map. And Ragna has done a great job for the blue team to the south of controlling that area. You know what really impresses me is how we got 50 players in the game and no one's disconnected. Though I probably shouldn't say that now. I don't... It's just madness. Well, looks like a small run by here by... You know, whoever this is. I'm not going to try to keep too much track. Alaton! Just a small run by of some pawns, making it through the trees. Behind the lines, though, there's not always enough units to deal with it. Some of the tanks moving up to, to engage. And, ooh, easily shut down. As well as some shurikens, EMP fighters, uh, will move to respond. And go to the strategical view for a bit. And the sea battle, I always think the sea battles look really cool. It is almost an entirely another game. A lot of players will dedicate themselves to just learning about the naval battles. There is a kind of a rock, paper, scissors sort of situation going on with a, a lot of the engagements. But it appears so far about even in the seas. How about up to the north? Again mostly held. It looks like the cool colors, the blue team, generally, or blue adjacent, uh, will for the most part hold control. And most importantly, Ragna over here, with his commander, as a tournament winner, earning the Viking cap. Some submarines as well. I'm very interested to see. So usually, and beyond all reason, there is a front line, and then uh, either just kind of auxiliary players doing either naval or air battles, and then eco players who are rushing up to a massive and near unlimited economy. It is an exponentially scaling economy and beyond all reason, which I won't get too much into because it, the, then, then we have to do math, which is scary, but in beyond all reason, very technically you can get near unlimited resources because you can convert energy into metal. Um, and once you get into the thousands of metal to energy conversion, which you can see up here, you can start producing more units and uh, energy production based off of your previous energy production. So it's just this feedback loop of you build more energy to get more metal, which allows you to build more energy, which allows you to get more metal. And um, if players are allowed to go for long enough, they can essentially build whatever they want, uh, which may include up to and beyond nuclear missiles, which are 
a devastating choice, especially if you catch the opponents off guard. Though I doubt many of these teams will be left without anti-nuke capabilities. If this doesn't end in mass nukes, I am going to be incredibly disappointed, by the way. Some more <laughs> commanders battling it out under and over the water. Looks like Chisato here fighting Preterick, who doesn't really have the ships to compete. And down goes the commander underwater. Meanwhile, Ragna still holding the line, blockading in Starcraft Man and Murderbot. He's actually got him contained here. And that little inlet, there's going to be no way around. The air still covering both sides. We have some bombers coming in from the southern team. Just uh, a pretty decent spread so far. Going for the economy of the north side. Ah, oh, Jimmy! Trying to carpet bomb those wind turbines, which are uh, close enough together to potentially start a chain reaction. Depending on the volatility of a building, especially energy buildings, they can explode and damage buildings nearby, which can in, in turn explode and damage buildings nearby. You see where this is going. Starcraft at 2% and goes down in the explosion, taking out the production with it. Ragna may be able to claim this bay for his own and make a ground base incursion, or at least he, he's now freed up some landing space for his team. But how is his team doing along the uh, river? You can see the overall resource income of the teams here in the top right. So far, the blue team, well, the metal income is probably a little more valuable, but I'm honestly impressed by how close it is on both sides. So far, oh my. Um, so the statistics screen was not designed <laughs> to have this many players on it. So we could only see one team. But Ragna has dealt twice the damage of anyone else. Including on the enemy team. His fleet and his containment here paying off. And he still has that commander. Which, um, whether intentionally or stoically teabagging. To start things off. It's 22 to 17 commanders. And the real winner here is the fact that my FPS is still over 60. All right, let's get that full overview. Looks like I'm gonna use my little fancy drawing tool. Forget how to do that, actually. Hmm. I don't know if I can do it as an observer, but you can draw on the map. You can put little indicators like here be um, but I have it set to, to get rid of those because both teams are sending out dozens of those, like, every few seconds, so I thought it might be a, a bit distracting. So all we can really see right now are the pings. But the game has the most advanced and detailed pinging and communication system of any RTS. It truly makes you feel like you're playing an RTS, even if your teammates don't respond. Seaplane gunships? I've never seen these. They look sick. Seaplanes can only be built out of water, but of course they fly. A bit notorious for doing inordinate amount of damage, if I remember correctly. But Ragna is continuing forward. His ships are pursuing up to the northern sea. Alongside his teammate, and the blue team has, for the most part, controlled now the northern islands. What about the south? Is there any striking back? Some shurikens, anti-air boats, or hovercraft even. Helping to deal with it. And it looks like the red team struggling on all fronts. Interestingly, both teams have players in the back quarter building underwater fusion reactors. I guess it helps with cooling. Um, a lot of the water-based stuff has somewhat different statistics or is unique. We do have entire grids of tidal generators queued up as well. But overall, it does look like 
the blue team. So taking territory is important. Access to metal extractors is is absolutely key. But at the end of the day, it comes down to who's able to scale their economy more dramatically. And so far, the red team actually has more energy. <sighs> Fusion at near point blank. Dark Knight. Here protecting those fusions. They're also that's an advanced fusion reactor. The greatest energy gain. 3,000. Compared to a wind turbine, which gives around 10. It is the most expensive eco building in the game. And it doesn't particularly like losing all its HP. It explodes and will likely take out everything in a, uh, nearby. Meanwhile, air support is called in. The boat's battling it out. It looks like enough of the battleships here. For the green team. Or for green. For T- uh, You know what? I'm not- North versus South. Or cool versus warm. I think is more accurate, but- Oh no. The fusion's under fire. Bombing runs coming in. Planes can crash to the ground doing damage. Though rarely enough to actually outright kill something. But it might finish it off. There is no controlling that. If you fly enough planes over, even if they all get shot down, you might still do damage because of the crashes. Almost everything is a projectile, including the units themselves. Another fleet to the south. These are Paladin cruisers up against oppressor destroyers. I mean, the Paladins do look stronger, but I'm not exactly sure the rock, paper, scissors at play here. Some artillery tanks looking like snorkels on uh, really the only area, trying to fire their payloads, but struggling to actually hit anything. Those things can easily be dodged by units that are actually moving, which in this case doesn't seem to be the purple hover tanks. Ragnar still making a lot of progress up to the north side. <laughs> I can't get over the look of them. <laughs> My god. The battle will continue. Just controlling the camera in this is an art form, I will say. So bear with me. Though there are several different types of cameras you can use. Let's uh, take a journey down the river. Here we see war. War never changes. Still contested, though as we make our way up to the north, we see some spiders climbing the hills. More ships controlling aircraft in the uh, air. I mean, where else would you expect them? We see Ragna's foothold here. What is that thing? Sonar plane. Oh, you can land aircraft to potentially dodge anti-air fighters as well. But that, of course, makes them vulnerable to ground-based units. Still, red has scaled their economy significantly harder now than blue. The northern team. Oh, but a big bombing run coming in. An entire fleet. I believe those are tier 2 bombers. Oh, wait. I take it back. A whole bunch of tier 1s for now. The tier 2s are much larger, but tier 1s still potentially deadly. Bombing the energy conversion production. Getting a lot. Oh, targeting the fusions. Is it enough? They're coming around for another pass. Is there enough anti-air to deal with this? Some repair coming through. It was at like 10%. A lot of the anti-air turrets doing a number on the bombers as they come around. And fighters coming in to respond. It will be enough. There are now 4,300 units on the field. A nuke! Oh no! It's a hit! I didn't even notice! Yeah, I didn't even hear it! Nuclear launch detected. Oh, by the way, in case this is a selling point for you, there is a winter announcer pack. Wonder how that got there. Though, uh, I don't think it applies to observing. We're gonna have to deal with just the winter caster pack for that one. More shurikens, trying to EMP. So EMP is not instant, but instead, depending on the HP of a unit, uh, it takes more EMP damage 
to be stunned temporarily. As you see here, the shurikens don't do any damage themselves, but are able to lock down some of these units. But it doesn't seem like there's much of a follow-up before fighters come in and clear them out. Some of the fleet will move up. Ooh, what do we got here? The Dreadnought Battleship, which seems like a bit of a contradictory description. Moving in. An anti-nuke carrier as well. Over to the south. So far, the seas, the battle lines drawn more obviously in the oceans than they are. Oh, oh another nuke! There is anti-nuke capability, and it is significantly cheaper than building a nuclear missile. But, uh, it can be taken out as well. If you aim well, we can actually see some of the anti-nuke ranges on the ground, which, while helpful, the amount of circles is making my brains hurt. Uh, I'm just gonna leave radar and say, you know what? Just, it's just too much. There's so much going on. Have to leave it to the players to figure that one out. Most of the combat getting pushed back. You do not want to be surrounded because the, the flagship, the largest craft you can build, can potentially pummel sink like hundreds of meters inland. If you park a flagship in one of these bays, it can hit probably about to here. So any of those players along the edges, along the beaches, you're not just, you're not, you can't just give up the water. And of course, that allows units to land. And, and there are some amphibious units that can potentially work their way all the way around as well. Hover tank raid. Um, oh, what is this? What do you have? Are those finally tier three? Or are those rocket bots? Tier two rocket bots, but a spider invasion. Ragnas build a spider group on top of the mountain, which is an angle that most units can't hit, and a lot of units won't even be able to see. The spiders are coming over the top. The rocket bot's on the low ground. He's hitting the economy. He's almost even with the bombers here. But the rocket spiders, the rocket bot's gonna try to engage them. We'll actually get, oh, they miss. I don't think they have anything but a radar signature, which means they, they don't have a good bead for accuracy. Ooh, a Juno goes off another nuke to the north. The anti-nuke keeps getting taken out. The spiders will be taken down for now. But the hover tanks holding the line alongside the battleships. Multiple battleships to the north side as well. But it looks like red fighting back. What is the overall resources? Looks like the blue team has now taken the lead with 113,000 to 104,000 energy. 2.5 to 2.1 thousand metal per second. Is that per second? Yeah, it's per second. It's a streaming economy, and I'm not just talking about Dronely fans, but instead the ability, it, you can't really bank up resources, but instead it's whether your income is high enough to support the creation of things that are usually multiple times what you have in storage. So it's about maintaining that kind of supply line and logistics, as opposed to just grabbing all the resources on the map. Oh, it's that time. The ultimate weapon, even more than a nuclear missile. The rapid fire long range plasma cannon. The Calamity or the Ragnarok. This is the most expensive building in the game. 61,000 metal and 718,000 energy and takes a huge amount of build power in order to create. So even if you had those resources, it would still take a whole lot more to create it in a timely manner. But it fires off projectiles that cannot be blocked nearly as easily um, as the ones from nuclear missiles. It looks like it's gonna finish. You'll get an opportunity. But it is. In many games, the ultimate late game weapon, it's kind of like building a wonder in Age of Empires, except a wonder that can shoot massive cannon uh, ballistics. So. And of course, you don't just win the game if you build oh, a nuke. I, did it get knocked out of the sky by interceptors? 
Always looks so cool, the anti-nuke interceptors. So far, holding. Wait, what do we have there? Those icons are new. Ooh. Razorbacks. Battle mechs. Tier 3 from the gantry, but still a more agile unit than the commander itself. But we're starting to get a whole lot of tier 3 units on the field. As well as, of course, things like the Calamity. I'm trying to keep a lookout for more nukes. I mean, it's hard to miss them when, when they go off. We're at 5,700 units on the field. There is... The basic limit is usually around 1,800 units per player. It's more set by the map than it is... And your own computer. Than it is... Um, an actual hard limit. There is no sort of supply like... Starcraft or Age of Empires. It is very rare to actually reach the unit limit. And I don't know if there is even a limit for this particular match. Oh my god. Multiple. Are those Junos? Oh. Tactical nukes. The summoning circle for the Calamity. It's at 80% from X Factor. Who is the highest ranked player on the red team? He doesn't quite have the resources. He has a hundred or so, give or take, construction. Can I select? I'm sorry. He has... I believe I saw a hundred. And thirty or so construction aircraft. Oh my god! Here comes the fleet. Nukes are landing! I think they spotted it. The bombers are coming in. But the interceptors... Looking to deal with it. A lot of the bombers taken down. Targeting the fusion cores are taken out. The Calamity is online, but for how long? The bombers are mostly taken down before they can get close. But Ragna has hundreds of pawns on the way across. But going to get incinerated by the flamers here. Oh, a whole lot of turrets in turn will take them down. Those tier one units flooding the field. The Calamity is firing and hitting the economy. It's got a bead on it. The Calamity costs a huge amount of energy to fire each shot, but clearly his team has supported that effort. You can already see from our orbital viewpoint here. Oh, another hit. Was that a nuke? I think it was a nuke intercepted. It was air bursted. No damage on the ground. But more shots coming over the hills. Terrain does block it. But there isn't a perfect terrain blocker. He he placed it well. And the targets are hitting. Some of the the only way to block these shots are shield generators, which do not block them but deflect the hits. Which can end disastrously as well. Still firing. A nuke is going up. The calamity still shelling. Neither side Oh, a nuke to the north. I'm not sure whose base that was. I think that was from the uh, red team, but I'm not 100%. More shield generators across the board. Over to the south. But the Calamity has done a lot of damage, and it looks like... The fleet has been turned back. Orange has made their way along the southern delta. And now is threatening the production of the back line in the sea. Team Blue struggling to compete with the, the Wombo Combo of the Calamity and the naval superiority of the red team now. Still trying to make some headway, but to the north, there's just an endless supply, it seems. What is all this? Just, he's pumping out a cruiser every second. The shipyard, it, it takes more time for the cruiser to clear the pad than it takes to construct a new one. I think he's upgrading to battleships now, which take a little bit longer. The Calamity is still firing. And for the first time, even I'm starting to lag. As we reach over 6,000 units, as well as multiple top-tier defensive emplacements firing projectiles across. Is he using a friendly range extender? You could technically fire at your teammate's shield to bounce, essentially skip 
the cannon shots off and get even more range. Uh, an entire vanguard of shields here, protecting the most valuable economy. If any of those fusion cores go up, it's going to be an absolute disaster. What is the summoning circle building? Mass flat cannons. 6,500 units. I gotta say, they didn't give up on the ocean. And now, well, X Factor has 47,000 energy income per second, which is enough to fire that plasma cannon. It is 16 to 18 commanders left as well. One of them up at the very north side of the map. What are all these? What are you building? Fusion reactors, naval fusions. Did Ragna himself go down? Uh, sad face. It looks like Ragna lost his commander. That's possible. We're gonna start tallying commanders when we get down to single digits, but for now, I think we'll, uh, we'll, we'll hold off on that. God, the fusions. If a nuke could slip back here, there's no way. If they could get their own calamity. When we get a lot closer... To the ground you can see the terrain differences here making it difficult to really get a beat on anything on both sides the cannon shots are actually some of them just hitting the mountain as almost nothing as perfect accuracy they're all projectiles which means you have to be very careful about where you're firing sometimes because it does just as much damage to your teammates and your own units I'm sure. It looks like many of the players in the game struggling with their frames, which the fact that the game is still working is, um, incredible. A technological, uh, accomplishment. Meanwhile, oh my, here comes a big incursion. This is from the flow here, who's been building up a, a massive fleet throughout this. And is now working on to Ragna's foothold. Well, uh, at least flippers. There's just not enough defenses here. There's still some seaplanes above. And oh, he's got a Ragnarok firing back. Another nuke at point blank range. More nukes on the beachhead. They're trying to take down the Marauders. They're a little bit late. Both sides firing massive cannons. It's a Ragnarok versus a Calamity. Cortex versus Armada. But the shields are holding. The shields will eventually go down under enough firepower, or if you get underneath the shields, essentially think Star Wars Episode 1 shield mechanics. Um, if, if you get inside the shields, you could just fire wherever you want. Otherwise, the shields will absorb and bounce everything off. All right. God, the Northern Islands are devastated. And now damage dealt overall. Units killed, units produced, units lost. We'll go to. Damage dealt. About even on both sides, it looks like. Energy produced. X Factor's at 33 million right now, whereas Chisato is number one for the Southern team. And that is not remotely close to 33 million. But the Southern team in the blue does now have 1,000 more metal per second. The shields are holding. We have an entire vanguard. Oh, Thor's! Thors are here with their built-in EMP missiles and their chain lightnings here. May actually be able to EMP some of the Razorbacks. Wait, Razorbacks or Rattlesnakes? I've always messed this up. Rattlesnakes are something different. Razorbacks. But the Thors are incredibly tanky. The strongest tank in the game. The only unit with higher HP, I believe, is the Juggernaut. 
Which I'm very surprised we haven't seen any yet. Some Vanguard plasma cannons. All tier 3 units. 7,200 units now. On the field. Oh, massive fleet engagement to the north. A whole lot of lasers here. I'm not actually sure. What do we got? Is that a flagship? Yes, the Black Hydra. Multiple flagships. Against the battleships of either side. They have multiple weapon emplacements. Just brawling it out right now. Flagship clearly taking a lot of damage. Getting driven back by the sheer numbers. But there's some subs underneath as well. Some depth charges coming out. The ship's at ramming speed, just chasing through, target firing. It looks like they'll be content to just hold the line for now. There's wrecks, honestly. I don't even know how they move, there's wrecks everywhere. God, there's probably hundreds of thousands of metal underneath. Resigned? Someone's voting for a resign? I don't think his team's gonna be on board with that. I'm not even sure which team is trying to resign, but what a coward. Here's the crazy part. There are 50 players, at least when this game started, but 55 spectators as well. I've never seen it. It is madness. And the spectators do not lag the game. Uh, unlike in some other <coughs> StarCraft. Is anyone not lagging? You can actually see the FPS of the players. See why Ragna's so good? He's using DeepMind. All right, 44 FPS. Not only the highest ranked, but also the high... Actually, let's go to the Ragna player camp and see if he's just super zoomed in. Oh, God. Okay. No, he's just got a supercomputer. All right, I've made a huge mistake doing this, though, trying to keep up with it. Not a good idea. I'll also fire a cannon. Now, oh my god. They summoning circle of construction aircraft. What are they summoning? Brenda! The behemoth. I lied. The behemoth has the most... <laughs> it is described as a barely mobile heavy turret. And aptly named, the behemoth has the most HP of any unit in the game. The Juggernaut has 149,000. The Behemoth, 335,000. Let us, for reference, check one of these construction aircraft, which has 160. The Behemoths are now very, very much struggling to move forward. Um, barely mobile, the most accurate possible description, 8,000. 531 units on the field. The mini-map. Usually quite useful. This map, even the macro map, still a difficulty. More fleet battles. It still looks like a, a bit of a stalemate. As I don't know if you could actually jam up the seas with Rex. I know some of them are actually up above the water, and they do have collision. But I'm not sure if you can create such a ship graveyard. It's effectively a blockade. We may find out. More bombers coming in. Sounds getting difficult to register, as there's only so many that can register at a time. There's only so many thousands of sound channels. But this battle will still continue. Another group of subs is moving up as well. I, actually, I think those are construction bots. Starting to reclaim. Actually, they're resurrecting the units. Takes a little more time and energy. But you can technically bring units back and salvage them to fight in your army. Turning uh, those units under the water against your opponents. I hear a whole lot of bombers going off. Ah, uh, fighting in the straight and absolutely obliterate a round of hover tanks. We have the tier 3 units on either side. The wrecks just... The field is more wreckage than it is 
anything else at this stage. There's another Ragnarok at point blank range. Rarely do you see two, let alone more, in a single game, but this is beyond what is reasonable. 8,000. We're not quite there yet. We're looking for over 9,000 units. It's getting more and more difficult to imagine, but it seems like we're going to have more and more time to contemplate it. The behemoths have finally made their way down to the river and will attempt to cross, which is, is quite an arduous process. But... That they take... There is no easy way to take them down besides the D-gun from commanders, which disintegrates anything. There's only nine commanders left for the blue team. I think many of them are, yeah, hidden in the far back. As we're getting down to it, it's getting closer. The, uh, the blue team has 1,000 more metal per second, as well as 40,000 more energy. As exponential truly means that 8,650 units on the field. It's impossible to tell without potentially breaking the game and selecting every unit on the field, which I am I am not going to do it for my own sake and sanity. It's hard to tell how many of each sort of unit, but I bet at least a quarter of them are in constructors at this point. There was a nuke. Not sure if it was intercepted. It looks like, oh my God, the nuke. There's not enough particles. Not even all the explosions. The fog of war and chain of commands is real. As this is uh, about four times the players, beyond all reason features, the most players in an average game of any RTS I've ever seen. The uh, most common game mode is eight versus eight, which is remarkably playable. But you guys signed up for 25 versus 25. All right, I don't want to hear the complaints in the chat. I know this is in the past, but I'm chastising you in the future. The behemoths have almost finished crossing the river and legend has it when they do. Victory will be soon to follow. Players are dropping left and right. Their teammates can claim control of their units or just uh, their resources. The naval battle is both... Wait, are those just... Wait. Krakens. Long-range battle subs. Amongst the wreckage. Hiding amongst... Oh my. Multiple long-range cannons. We gotta stop zooming out all the way. It's not good for the health of my GPU. And a juggernaut is in production. <laughs> is this the first juggernaut? I don't think so. I think I see a couple more on the minimap. Tier 3 units, a lot of the time, have their own outline on the minimap. As they are worthy of even greater note. The naval battle does seem to uh, be at a stalemate to the north. But the northern team breaking through somewhat to the south as Green is in full retreat with his fleet. The behemoths will continue forward. I believe there are some nukes going off as well. Oh, firing off D guns. Oh, but MDXD comes in. He gets a D-gun on the behemoth. Disintegrates it. Getting chased down, though. The behemoth D-guns in turn. Well, it's not quite at the same level. But the behemoths are just obliterating. He gets one, but there seems to be an endless trade of them. Slowly but surely breaking forward. The commander tried to engage. The battle of the behemoths. 
The commander can one-shot all of them, but has to be very, very careful. They don't have that many commanders left. But they gotta stop these behemoths somehow. More shots at point blank. He's just trying to get behind all of them. If he gets close enough, the cloak will be revealed. That's how the cloaking works. There's a detection radius. Three of them. And he fires at the back line. Lines up another shot. Wait, did he miss it? No, he got both. But the behemoth will trade a shot and no, no! Down goes another commander. Explosions. Has anything dramatic happened? We're at 8,600. 8,860. 70 units. 80. 90. I think 100 just died. I don't know how quickly it updates. It seems it's still we're stalled out. Enough units are dying every second that despite producing hundreds, uh, several hundred are dying as well. The behemoths are still breaking through. Oh, come on. We're edging that 9,000 mark. Here comes a bomber fleet. Another potentially game-ending mo ending move in your more standard gameplay. Here, yet another of the tools likely to do some damage, but not enough. Flying right over the juggernauts. The bombers yeah, engaging the juggernauts is not an ideal strat. Just working on the Ragnarok cannon here, potentially. A strafing run. Well, at least take out some of the support, if not the cannon itself. Anti-air. Can actually see it at this speed. The game itself automatically slows down somewhat in order to maintain something resembling a decent FPS, which I think is a better way of handling it than just a straight-up slideshow. Titan versus Juggernaut. The Titan no match. Looks like with all those bombers going down, we don't quite get to the, um, yeah, the, the Armada Titans. Smaller and significantly more maneuverable than the Cortex Juggernaut. But there's nothing quite like the Juggernaut. More bombers. It's 17 to 8 commanders. The behemoths have almost broken through to the shield wall. And this is the goal. You bring down the shields, you open up the opportunity to hit it with the plasma cannon. And with it, disable essentially the entirety of the economy. And also, to the south, the juggernauts now. Wait, no, those are titans. Titans and behemoths. The behemoths are approaching the shields. There's a whole, just a multiple lines. Volley firing those pulsars. And they do incredible single target damage, but again, the behemoth just does not go down easily. Another one falls, but there's more behind it. They will continue. Juggernauts looking to match. More juggernauts. The tier 3 units streaming across. The red team seems like it's consolidating its position. Unless something turns around soon, if they're not able to deal with the economy, the blue team has a better economy overall, but they don't seem to be able to bring it to bear. Which, you know, at this stage of the game, it's hard to blame them. I misspoke again. It's not juggernauts. It is titans, which are significantly easier to deal with. The trade of behemoths. Much more. The plasma cannons are still firing. Their projectiles just bouncing off until they find something. 
the behemoth taking entire volleys of laser fire and the bombers just finding plenty of targets it's still at 70 percent each shot doing like one percent damage it might be enough to stem the tide just wow the the wreckage is blocking some of the shots eventually the wreckage will be enough if enough behemoths die they will cover for the ones that follow unfortunately it doesn't work well with it it looks like some of the shots are just going through anyways but creating a wall of wreckage the titans making their way down the fleet to the north oh my god an entire fleet of flagships which seems wrong but the range is just massive they're getting such massive hits a clear advantage in the northern sea here but juggernauts those are blue team juggernauts trying to stop the titans from breaking through if any of these fusions go up the behemoths keep they've retargeted they've decided not to go directly into the firing line of the lasers but instead behemoth still oh it still has a lot of hp <laughs> the flagships might be able to turn it around the blue team needs something soon they have the resources. This is where it seems like most of the advantage lies. Green. Chisato here. Has a fleet, I believe, on both fronts. His flagships are being sent to either side. An impressive feat. <laughs> With this many frames. The behemoth still looking the breakthrough. Juggernaut's holding the line. We're at over 9,000 units. We did it. By the way, here. Ah, oh, it held barely. The juggernauts moving to intercept the behemoths, but neither is going to be able to do much damage to the other very quickly. The juggernauts have much higher DPS, but the behemoths have way more HP. Targeting even more. But the flagships. The fleet. Now starting to shell. The shields protect against nukes. They protect... Oh, speaking of nukes. More nukes going up. It looks like a nuke actually landed. Is he firing nukes into the ocean? It's unclear. There are anti-nuke carriers as well. Uh, there are mobile anti-nuke options. And the Juggernauts. The Juggernauts! Wait a second! The fusion! The chain reaction throughout half the base! The Juggernauts are breaking through. They were distracted by the behemoths. But the red team finding more and more progress on the ground even while losing the seas. The bombers moving to intercept, but the Juggernauts have already done the damage. Another fusion core reaction. And... Oh, this fusion's on the outside of the shields. It's eating hits. The plasma cannon. The projectiles are sliding off. It's only... It hits. It's enough. Wipes out another one. And can the juggernauts be stopped? It comes down to the commanders. They can retreat to the seas. Who will control them at the end? Juggernauts can also walk into the water. It will not save you. I'm not sure if they'll be able to fire. I think they can still fire. They're tall enough. To actually battle the ships head on. Puns intended. That was a lot of the economy of the blue team. But not nearly enough. They're still ahead. Meanwhile. Ragna supporting the fleet of Chisato. As they go. For the aqua economy. No, no. Ocean based economy. And some flagships in the inlet here. 
Even finding an opportunity to intercept some of the hover tanks. By the way, wow, that's a lot of hover tanks. The behemoths and the juggernauts have cleared out a lot of the land. It's not... So now it comes down to eliminations. The blue team only has six commanders left against 13 of the red team. Juggernauts melting the behemoths now. The flanking damage. Teams sharing a huge amount of energy with each other. Trying to support their carry players. I hesitate. The damage. Multiple players over a million. Which is a ridiculous number. Units killed in the thousands. We still have 8,500 on the field. A lot of them tier 3. Get another perspective. Oh my. They've made so much progress. They're about to actually win the seas. The blue team. So the only safe place will be far inland. Lopez. Oh, he's not cloaked. He's not cloaked. He needs to cloak his commander. If he gets D-guns onto the flagships. I'm not sure he can fire it entirely underwater. I'm surprised he's not getting targeted here. Is he cloaked? We just can't see it right. It's unclear. Just the fact he's still alive is ridiculous. Meanwhile, the fleet moving its way through, but at the same time, the Juggernauts are closing in. Juggernauts on both sides. Tier 3 is fully online. Some dragons. The highest level, the equivalent of a battlecruiser. Starcraft battlecruiser. Not like a battlecruiser in the ocean. Kind of deal. There is anti-air on the Juggernauts and the Titans, but these are the strongest airships here. The shields. And by the way, the plasma cannons have been pounding this entire time. If those shields go down, it will not be long. Oh, the behemoth! It's at 10%! Can it get through? It's firing! The shields are failing! Oh, no. They're, they're in range. One of these fusions is all it's gonna take. A chain reaction co could go up on the entire base! Oh, my God! It's a disaster! Three quarters! No! Four quarters of the base! Just obliterated in a massive chain reaction that knocks out the infrastructure of essentially the entire team. There is one last foothold on the hill. But the seas are still controlled. The chain reaction. Here's the thing. Chisato and Ragna have most of their economy liquid-cooled right now. And they are winning the battle in the oceans. So it's not over. Once again, it comes down. There are only four commanders left. Control of the oceans here is going to be... Well, remember that juggernauts and titans are not limited to the land. Where are the commanders? It's almost impossible to know. There, there are 12 of them on the red team. Four of them on the blue. Those four commanders are so important now. You gotta get... I'm sure his team's yelling at... Get that commander back! What are you doing? He's on autopilot. Where... Who else has a commander left? Is the question. High gain. Up here. Probably should be cloaked in the corner. Just because you lose your commander doesn't mean you're out of the game. But if your, your team loses all their commanders, they are out of the game. Two, three. And, and no D20. So the two players who are essentially winning the naval battle right now do not have their commanders left. Honestly, I would consider asking your teammates to share. As, well, hiding in the corner is probably the best deal you can make. 
So the red team will control the land. The unit count dropping, and with it, our FPS slowly but surely climbing again. Just like these juggernauts. The seas have almost been entirely won by the blue team. But now it comes down to commander hunting. No resources are permanently destroyed. Unless they are commanders and they're reclaimed on the ground. Technically, if there was a ceasefire for like 20 minutes, everyone could reclaim the metal extractors on the map and rebuild. And essentially, start over again. For better or worse. Of course, I don't think we're going to have that ceasefire. But the point is that ground is... Uh, only held as long as you can claim it. You can't mine out of bases, like in StarCraft 2. Resources being shared everywhere across the board. They've almost entirely cleared the seas, but it looks like with a whole lot of... Tr just an entire air fleet of torpedo bombers literally hundreds they've managed to turn it around as well as a calamity cannon firing on the flagships the red team may be able to stem the tide just barely at least for now meanwhile the hill the last bastion of the blue team has held there's enough juggernauts, and the high ground is meaningful. The ability to fire down on your opponents and be protected from a whole lot of potential fire, but bombers! Wait, whose bombers are those? Those are the red team. Wait, those are EMP? EMP transports? Are they the red team? Yes. No, radar planes. Wait, why are there radar planes here? I'm not sure. Well, they're gonna get great vision at least. Not sure that's exactly what they're looking for. Kind of odd to see. Maybe trying to find the commanders. Oh my god! An entire fleet of bombers is hit by some sort of splash. I think they destroyed a juggernaut and the explosion caught them. Because of course it does hit the air as well. Some grave robbers here looking to revive. Uh, aptly named, they can revive the juggernauts on the field. Through great expense, but still cheaper than building a new one. More nukes. 11 to 4 now. But the flagships have been stopped. Banding together with the torpedo bombers. It's hard to miss. Just, they have anti-air, but it isn't nearly enough to stop this much firepower. As well as multiple plasma cannons turning around and firing on the seas. So the battle in the seas has stalled out. And now the juggernauts are the only thing that stand between the blue team and disaster. God, the wreckage is everywhere. The shotgun and laser blasts. It's impossible to tell whose juggernaut is whose. Friendly fire is in full effect. And when they die, they explode as well, which of course doesn't discriminate. The battles continue. The oceans claim plasma cannons firing. I think hitting just as much friend as foe. It just depends on who has the momentum. Anyone have a spare fusion? The incomes are actually still surprisingly even. Five to six K metal and three hundred and seventy thousand or so energy per second. A flank is attempted. Just now Chizato switched to, to juggernauts. And wait, they've made a lot of progress to the north. Oh, point blank massive chain reaction. Doesn't quite reach the main economy, but oh no. 
They didn't really notice the stream of juggernauts. A commander will be used to try to get a D-gun in range. A risky move, but he will get it. Holds for now, but going to get fired upon. Gisano looking for targets. Oh, that chain reaction was pretty devastating. The Juggernaut Graveyard indeed. You have to zoom in a little bit to see the Rex. Probably a good thing. <laughs> Meanwhile, the air battles will continue. I don't know how many Juggernauts on the field. We still have 7,000 units. Oh god, it's- the units are struggling to move past all the destroyed juggernauts, which is creating even more destroyed juggernauts. It looks like trying to reclaim or revive. Just reclaim here. Claim that metal. More explosions. I'm not actually sure if that's supposed to be. I'm not sure if nukes hit and created this divot in the hill. Or if that's how it was naturally made. But nukes and other explosions do um, some very abrupt terraforming. The juggernaut production and, and the sea-based economy is holding strong. Chisato making his way through the center. Ragna is holding the seas. Alongside Sad Panda as well. Still enough in the oceans. The Juggernaut battles will continue. Another massive one. I hear multiple plasma cannons firing near point blank. But... Essentially undefended. Yeah, the plasma cannons firing, but the Juggernauts are closing in. And what is there to respond to them? Oh no! We missed it, but the base was taken down. And the land has been claimed. The last bastion of the blue team on the ground. Though a bit of a scorched earth policy is there's a massive chain reaction that takes out a whole wave of fusion reactors. And some very juicy looking reactors over here. There's no shield. There are no defenses. Oh, but a massive hit. The, the the juggernaut chain reactions themselves. Another one will go down. Oh, he's running out of energy or he's just retargeting. Another one take it down. But those reactors are looking mighty vulnerable here. Oh no, they're getting so close. Another laser. Will it be enough to chain? Yes! Oh, <laughs> just wipes out another wave. And the red team just lost half of their economy. And suddenly the blue team... Well, they're going for the kills. Oh my. In the oceans here, the dragons... Wait, whose dragons were those? Eight to four commanders. Now they're commander hunting. Both sides are just trying to get the commanders. Their juggernauts scattered throughout the field. The land is being scoured. And the seas are controlled for the most part, by the blue team. The commander is retreating to the edges of the map. Juggernauts continuing to carve their way through. Eventually, the sheer... Oh! More explosions! I'm not sure if those are juggernauts dying, commanders dying. The commander count remains the same. There's some flagships defending against the juggernauts from the seaboard. We've got more juggernauts here from Sad Panda to the south. Trying to hold the line as a forward operating base was created by Rebel Node. Dragons taking it down. One of the commanders badly bruised, but lives. Cascade. 
The commander hunting will continue. Red has scoured. There's nothing left on the land. Protect the last commanders. We started with 50. There's only 12 left on the field. There are several hundred resurrection subs as well. What is that? Another chain reaction goes up in the seas. It appears to some of the bombing runs. Just aircraft in general finding an angle. The dragons just pin cushioning the juggernauts. The juggernauts have the anti air, but there's overall air cover, which means they're not able to bring interceptors in. The juggernauts are not making as much progress as they once were. Wait, wait, whoa, 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 there's a juggernaut down here! How did you get here? Meanwhile, the flagships still working their way forward. The economies in favor of the blue team. Chisano's been stalled out. He has 117,000 energy per second in 1.1 metal. 1.1k metal. Ragna, uh, about half that. They make up over half of what's left of the blue team on their own. Red team. The vast majority concentrated on the flow and the Elliton who make up about 90 out of 150 energy. Got some flagships here from Bus Driver, who's been building them up. The naval battle continues. On a ridiculous scale, Juggernaut's fighting for the beaches against flagships at point blank. They have the high ground because they have any ground at all. <laughs> oh my god. Still the commanders. Remain intact. None have been lost for quite a bit, but some of the juggernauts have made it through into the water. They're high enough up to engage directly the economy and are starting to cut it in half. Self-destruct on the Juggernaut doesn't quite make it. It's a bigger explosion if you actually get it off. Submarines fighting Juggernauts, which is a very odd scenario, but surprisingly effective. Mm. Is Juggernaut also self-destructing, taking out as much of the economy as they can? Bombers heading past. Juggernaut ticking down. Oh, find some to the back line. I think some hovercraft. More economy taken down. The flagship's closing in. Oh my god, the fleet of Russia. I think he just had it on repeat and it never stopped. Firing constant. The economies are lower than at their peak. We've reached the one hour mark, though it's taken a little longer because uh, we time warped a bit. Juggernauts, behemoths. Find their comms. There's only so much map. There's a lot of map. But it is finite. Another battle to the north. The dragons looking to cut down the flagships. Some light gunboats just running past. Well, gliding past. Ragna has like three shipyards. <laughs> Juggernauts making their way through. Deep behind the lines. They've successfully taken out the economy through the center. But the flagships are starting to roll it up again. The concerted effort in the seas. Maybe the deciding factor. The flagships. <gasps> the fusions. Are they protected by a hill? No. They could be targeted. There's a single shield. That won't be enough. The resurrection boats slash repair. Meanwhile, Juggernaut's breaking through. 
Oh my god, juggernauts in the river. They're gonna find some of the commanders. At point blank. A commander will go down. He's being manually targeted. Gisato trying to find the shot. Another hit. Down goes another one. Seven to four. Kazmada. The juggernauts are closing in. They're gonna control the seas. And they're starting to take out the ground. Is it enough? The economy again being shattered. And eventually that means there's gonna be no way. But the juggernaut count is just too damn high. A dozen juggernauts on the- uh, just right there. The red team couldn't capitalize on their initial damage. They never took full control of the seas. And I think the blue team, despite the efforts of this brave commander at point blank range, may be able to close it out. Yeah, the fusions taken down. Still four to six. Kazbada, one of the last six commanders for the red team. Oh, but wait. Titans making their way through. Some of them taken down. If they could snipe the commanders, they're still a dream. All these juggernauts, a single D-gun could take out half a dozen, but he has half a dozen more. And now at point blank, the flagships, another set. Down goes the commander. I don't know if incidentally or otherwise. Down to five. It looks like the commander's well protected the seas. High gain, permacloaked. Gonna be almost impossible to spot. Dark Knight, is that a decoy commander? Or did he res one? Unclear. Five to four. It looks like the red team wants to resign. They've lost most of their economy. They're about to lose the seas. The juggernaut's closing in from both sides. And no way. <laughs> they just don't have enough left. An epic battle. But the blue team, despite taking those initial losses, will be victorious. The resign means everything explodes dramatically as all their units will self-destruct. And your victors, the 25 players on the blue team. Looks like scavengers coming out on top of the most resource production. Efficient use of resources and also by far destroying the most allied units. Um, it looks like it immediately just ended the replay there. But, well, <sighs> hopefully you enjoyed that unreasonable game. I know it's a, a bit tough to follow. And with several times, even the players in this massive game, even tougher than usual. But hopefully, you enjoyed something a little different. I remind you that Beyond All Reason is absolutely free to play and created by volunteers. So you lose nothing, except maybe a bit of your sanity and the potential temperature of your GPU in uh, checking it out. You can find more info in the description. Uh, like and subscribe. And thank you to all those at Beyond All Reason. In, in fact, I'm going to take a little time here at the end. I mean, it's already gone on this long. But the reason... Um, especially in the second channel. There's not as much Beyond All Reason content. Um, is very simply uh, streaming, creating content for two different channels. I, I, I can't really do anything casually. This is what I found after 13 years of StarCraft 2. Uh, and unfortunately, just casually doing Beyond All Reason content, it felt like every day I had less hours in the day. So... I, I try to work smarter and not harder, but it was getting to the point of uh, effectively feeling like I could never get as much done as I wanted to. And I think Beyond All Reason is incredible. Has some of the best um, control scheme 
and support. It's truly made by players who want to play the game, which is not something you can say for the average game nowadays, especially those, you know, you have to pay for. Um, but it isn't that I dislike the game. It isn't that I, I'm upset with it or anything like that. Uh, the reason, very simply, uh, is not as much beyond all reason content, especially on uh, the second channel. Uh, the Winter Gaming channel, not the Winter StarCraft channel, is that I don't feel I can do it justice the way I would want to. Which sounds like a bit of a cop-out, but it, it truly brought me and I I'm, was so excited and still impressed by the amount of support and interest it had. And I want to do more. And maybe I'll be able to figure out how to do that in the future by working smarter and not quite harder. Um, so check it out today i hope you enjoyed thank you for watching um and thank you to the team for making the game um and for the players for playing it and for you for watching see you next time good luck have fun stay chill